Hello, Megan. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How you doing? Uh, very good. So your, uh, your interview and the interview that the president did on MSNBC are, are getting a lot of play over the weekend um, because uh, in, some, in some places he seemed to be hedging his bet. And on MSNBC, uh, he talked about a 15-week uh, limit on abortions. Yeah, well, he's this is one of the reasons why President Trump needs to put himself out there more, because just like President Basement, it's not OK for either one of these leading candidates on the Dem or the GOP side to stay underground. So to his credit, Trump is putting himself out there much, right. much more than Joe Biden. But we absolutely need to be probing their positions as the American public tries to make a decision. And Trump on the social issues with all due credit for the Supreme Court justices we got, has always been a little wishy-washy. He's lived pretty much 75 years. He's 77 now, I guess 73, whatever it is, before he became president, as a Democrat. (laughs) You know, one of my debate questions for him back in 2016 was, when did you become a Republican? Because if you look back at his life, he's been much, much more of a Democrat and more liberal on social issues, like virtually everyone in New York City is. And I think there's still a fair amount of that in him. So is this, for instance, let me play a clip um, with you where he was talking about can a man become pregnant? Play it. Can a man become a woman? Um, <laughs> in my opinion, you have a man, you have a woman. I, 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 think, I think part of it is birth. Can the man give birth? No. No, although they'll come up with some answer to that also. Someday, I heard just the other day, they have a way that now the man can give birth. No, I would say uh, uh, I'll continue my stance on that. So what, it, what was your takeaway? Because he never really answered it, but he did shake his head no towards the beginning. What's your takeaway from that? Well, I thought it was weak sauce. He, I really wish he, he did better on that. I like Ron DeSantis's answer, I'm going to be honest. Which is no, no, right, no, <laughs> right, no, obviously no, and it's not determined based on who can give birth. <laughs> it's determined by God, and it's pretty obvious just as soon as you come out of the womb. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it continues to be, notwithstanding this weird agenda by some activists in this crazy trans agenda pushing cult. Um, so Trump clearly knows that. I don't know if he's got. If he's trying to like appease some group of trans voters that he thinks is going to make the difference with him. Even when I had Don Jr. on my show, he was kind of dancing around this issue. I, I think that they think they're somehow going to do better with Democrats if they don't hit this straight on, even though, I mean, 98 percent of the Republican Party is united on this issue. This is not it is not a winner for any Republican to hedge on this. Uh, Just ask Asa Hutchinson. So I'm not sure what he's thinking. I feel like this and the abortion thing, he must be thinking more general election where there are Democrats who don't feel as Republicans do. But um, I really think there's such a small voting group on this particular issue. He needs a better answer and I hope he gets it soon. So will, do you think this will uh, shake the tree at all? I mean, I think he looks at the poll numbers and thinks there's, I mean, I'm going to win. Uh, so why not start a moderate campaign now? Uh, because I'm going to win the the primary. So let's just get past that and just start being you know more moderate to appeal to a wider audience than just the Republicans. Do you think that's going to work? I don't. I mean, I'm much more in the Ann Coulter field of thinking when it comes to who the party should nominate. I think they should nominate somebody who's going to drive turnout. And generally with Republicans, that means someone who is conservative, who is genuinely conservative. Look at what happened with John McCain. (laughs) Okay, like they've tried to go more moderate. It doesn't work. Um, Now, Trump does drive turnout because he's Trump. And there's something about him that, you know, his core constituency finds very appealing. And, you know, that 30 percent isn't going to abandon him, even if he comes out and says he wants abortions in the ninth month. I mean, that's really that's really the question, not whether he can shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue. But could Trump say that he's pro-abortion ninth month and still hold on to that core 30 percent 
Glenn, I think the answer is yes. Um, and he's almost toying with that experiment right now. He's not pro-abortion ninth month. He's really more banking on the fact that he appointed the three justices who made the difference on Roe v. Wade. And right. he's not going to lose any Republican voters to Joe Biden on the issue of abortion. Correct. Right? He's playing the right. long game. But he does need to generate enthusiasm. And it's already tamped down, not in that 30 percent of Republicans, but the other half who are tepid on Trump. So let me ask you about Joe Biden here for a second, because uh, I have started to see, uh, for instance, there was a an article in The Washington Post from a, a big, a big player uh, on the left. And uh, in the editorial, he said, you know, I love Joe Biden and he's done great things and nothing against anything he's ever done. But I think it's time for him to go. And I think that you see the supporters uh, and the uh, the key members possibly starting to move in and saying, you know, Joe, I think maybe you should go. Do you think he is the uh, candidate by the time we get to the the uh, election? I don't know, Glenn. I'm seeing what you're seeing. It seems like there's a movement underfoot to gently oust him and her. That was what was interesting yeah, about the yeah, yeah. In, in WAPO, which was they both need to go. We don't want to be stuck with her. <laughs> but, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. They selected her for identity politics reasons, and good luck subbing her out. Uh, and subbing in some other Dem, like Gavin Newsom, you know, who doesn't check the right boxes. And even who does check the right boxes. Uh, Sonny Hostin, woke identity politics warrior over on The View, was saying if he subs out Kamala Harris, he's going to lose the black vote. We're not interchangeable, even if he puts back in a black woman. But in any event, you can feel the ground shifting. CNN doing a long fact check on mm-hmm. Biden live last Thursday. I've mm-hmm. never seen them unleash their Daniel Dale guy on Biden. That was always a Trump thing. Um, Now more and more sort of getting interested in just how old President Biden is and polling heavily on it. And the results are disastrous. The Ignatius piece, um, there's been just example after example of how they seem to be realizing, you know what? He can't do it. We're going to lose if we stick with him. But I also think you have to ask yourself realistically, how do you get rid of him? You know, I think there's some fantasy that Barack Obama could do it. He could come get, you know, like give him the tap on the shoulder like you'd get at the at the dance. Time to sit down. Your dancing's over. Um, I'm not sure. Well, it's exactly voluntarily walks away from power like that. Well, voluntarily, uh, George Washington. But remember that Nixon did that. And Nixon only did it when he realized the party was no longer with him. When all of the people he counted on uh, to help support him were turning on him. And that's when he decided to resign. There's a, there's a good way to do this, and there is the tough way. And we're offering you the chance to make this your idea. And uh, well, I think part of the pressure might be the Hunter Biden scandal. When you saw the, um, uh, the uh, charges last week, are these real or are these bogus too? The gun charges? Yes. I mean, look, they're they're real in that he did it, and any one of us would have been charged for it. So okay, but of course they were brought very reluctantly by a guy who's on his side. David Weiss, the U.S. Attorney for Delaware, is on Hunter Biden's side. He's the man who's been investigating him for six years, who let the most damning charges expire under the statute of limitations even though Hunter's lawyers offered what's called a tolling agreement. They offered to extend the statute of limitations, and David Weiss said, nah, that's okay. He's, this, is, this is his prosecutor, so we're supposed to believe now he's going to be tough on Hunter. B.S., it was a fig leaf charge on only the gun uh, statute, which, by the way, a lot of people think won't even hold up. This gun statute's been deemed unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. Oh my and gosh. So it's possible they could go away on constitutional grounds that would probably be acceptable to most Republicans. Uh, so it's a kind of a low stakes matter. But let's say let's say he gets convicted, which he probably will. Some are saying this is a smart move by the Republicans because at least now Hunter and Joe have real skin in the game. 
he could potentially face jail time. And maybe it gives Dems like Obama and the party leaders on the Dem side the power to go to Joe and say, do it for Hunter. You'll pardon him while announcing you're just a one termer. Mm -hmm. You can give your son the pardon, keep him out of jail, save the Democrat Party. You'll be on Mount Rushmore. And you can save the whole family. Yes. But you know what? If that's the price it takes to get him out of there, uh. let's do it. <laughs> uh, so be as, uh, be as tough on this as you can be. When you see the... Uh, the left saying there there's no evidence there's no evidence they've got no evidence there's plenty of evidence i don't know if that all adds up to you know proof but there's tons of evidence if you were standing in a court of law because it's what you used to do and your client was joe biden and hunter biden and you saw the evidence that the prosecution has shown already and they say there's more how would you assess your chance of winning? It would de depend on the evidentiary standard. If it's preponderance of the evidence where you just have to prove 51% more likely than 49% not, he's guilty. If it's beyond a reasonable doubt, I would acquit him. So far, so far. But we, that's only because we haven't gotten all the bank records, which they're about to get. So, but there's a, it's more than 51% likely he did this. I mean, I would put it m more up in the 60s but if you're talking about conviction of a crime, yeah. we're not there yet. And um, what do the bank records, what are you looking for in the bank records? What do they have to show? Well, I mean, I would want to see the actual deposits of the money. But, you know, it's into Joe Biden's accounts in order to, you know, actually convict of a crime. But we had Peter Schweitzer on the show on Friday, and he's, of course, the hunter expert. Yeah. He was making some very interesting points about how, in order to show bribery, in order to show corruption, you really don't even need to show any deposits into Joe Biden's accounts. Showing the deposits into Hunter Biden's accounts is enough, not to mention the other eight family members Correct. who are on the take. Correct. You know, I mean, the, the benefit to the family member is sufficient. Mm -hmm. And this kind of brings me back to where I'm coming into this whole corruption scandal. I almost feel like Republicans are overstating their own burden. You know, it's, it doesn't need... I realize why they're doing the impeachment. I'm actually in favor of it, but it doesn't need to go that route. And they don't need to allege crimes. The corruption is there plain as the nose on your face. Yes. I want one, one honest journalist, just one with access to president Biden to get him in an interview and say, how dare you allow your son to sit on the board of Burisma, a yeah. Ukrainian company being investigated for corruption when you were the point man on the Obama administration's corruption cleanup in Ukraine. How dare you? Is that not disqualifying to your ongoing role as a public official? Go ahead. I Let's think it is. We're not going to see that, but I, I think it is. And I would love to see that. I, I go a step further as a father. You knew who Kolomoisky was. He's a brutal killer he beheads his opponents uh and you took your son who you knew had a drug problem and drinking problem and could easily be roped into anything and you allowed him to sit on on that board with that man are you out of your mind right when when he was drug adult i mean we were yes. just looking back at the timeline on hunter's addiction uh, I actually have this right in front of me because I was looking at it in preparation for my show today. So he joined the board of Burisma in April 2014. That same year, he was just discharged from the Navy Reserve after testing positive for cocaine. All right, that same year when he joined mm. the board, which Joe knows all of this. This is while his father was overseeing U.S. policy in, in Ukraine. Um, by May of 15, he had a relapse on his alcohol addiction by 2016, he had a relapse of his crack cocaine addiction. And this is all while he's doing business with, this, with the Chinese energy company, CEFC, while he's on the board of Burisma, which Jeez. his father knows because he's regularly calling into the Hunter business meetings yep. in order to lend the Biden name. He knows his crack addled son is sitting on these boards, cashing checks, and he's facilitating it. I mean, at a minimum, this counteracts the narrative of, 
What a great dad he is. What a great dad. I agree. I agree. Uh, Megan, thank you very much. We look forward to your uh, program. You can catch Megan Kelly wherever you get your podcast. She also follows this show uh, on Sirius XM. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Glenn. God bless. You bet.